Uh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a great uh, honor to be invited to this uh, prestigious workshop at the European Parliament. My focus is on the uh, social impact of robots. So first, a uh, qualification. I speak as a media and communication scholar, trying to make sense of the exciting world of AI and robots. I have learned a lot sitting on the Technology Advisory Committee of the Tokyo Organizing Committee on Olympic and Paralympic Games 2020. And after Rio, Japanese government and companies uh, began uh, in earnest to make the Tokyo Olympic Games uh, innovative and sustainable. So it is against this background that I shall talk about current issues in terms of new technologies in Japan and how can we understand their social impact. So briefly, I shall begin by introducing the theoretical framework I developed for a deeper understanding of the social impact of AI and robots. Secondly, um, I, I will share some observations from my two ongoing projects. And finally, I'd like to give some suggestions regarding the future of this field, at least in the Japanese context. So how can we understand the social impact of AI and robots? We live in a rapidly changing social environment, and it has been called as the fourth industrial revolution because new te communication technologies such as AI, robot, and IoT have emerged. Even as the concept of Industry 4.0 is still popular in many countries, the Japanese government has perhaps typically begun propagating the idea of Society 5.0. It can be interpreted as being the fifth step in the evolution of human society, one that is arguably smart. This may be debatable, but the point I take from it is that what we are experiencing now is not merely an industrial revolution, but rather a paradigm shift, at least in Japanese society. So how can we understand the paradigm shift in Japanese society? The theoretical framework I use is the complexity model of communication. The paradigm of complexity emerged from a number of different disciplines and has taken different forms. Perhaps the most well-known incarnation is the so-called butterfly effect. Edward Lawrence, a meteorologist at MIT, famously said in 1963, a butterfly fluttering its wings in Peking one day could possibly cause a month later a storm in New York. The complexity model of communication is a non-linear model. Therefore, it neither shows power as coming down from the macro level of institutions, nor pow uh, power as going up from the micro level of people's agency or empowerment. The aim of this model is to show the dynamic interaction of micro-level phenomena and macro-level phenomena, and all the phenomena in between, thereby demonstrating the paradigm shift of society. So at the macro level, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications of Japan announced the Smart Japan ICT strategy in June 2014. Their mission is to be the most proactive country in the world, and the action is realizing the world's most advanced ICT environment for Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. The question arises, how will this power from national level impact on Japanese people at the micro level? At this juncture, I'd like to introduce my ongoing two projects as they are aimed at answering such a question. The first one is Youth and AI Project, and the second one is Robot Engagement. The former project was conducted last summer. I asked 200 Japanese high school students about a future with AI and robots. In the first section, I'm collaborating with Hiroshi Ishiguro, who is one of the most popular Android uh, scientists. <coughs> We designed our questionnaires about young people and their adaptation to new technologies such as hologram, BMI, VR, enhance, and enhancement, and robots. Although Japanese young people seem able to adapt easily to new technologies, only 20% of them support the idea 
uh, of implanting a chip into the brain or replace artificial legs in order to improve their capability. In section two, I designed the questionnaires about the opportunities and risks of AI, which is based on the Stanford Artificial Intelligence and Life in 2030 report, as well as the International Symposium of AI for Social Good, which I co-hosted in Washington University with Harvard University in March 2017. The study considered both the opportunities and the risks. For today, however, I will focus on the opportunities side of the story. And robots provide uh, new opportunities in terms of care. For example, an aging population and increasing medical care expenses for the elderly are serious problems in Japan. Therapeutic robots such as Paro will heal elder people without taking any medicine, thus reduce the cost of health care and labor. But people engage with robots not only economically, but also emotionally. There are multiple engagements with social robots, such as entertainment, healing, social intimacy, and even pseudo-love. So now I briefly talk about my robot engagement project. I did field work on human-robot interaction at a nursing home in Tokyo with Professor Takanori Shibata, who is father of a therapeutic robot, Paro. The nursing home used many different kinds of robots, not only robot suits by Cyberdyne, but also communication robots such as Ibo, Peppa, and Paro. The first photo shows elderly people with dementia sat together in a common room as they have to be awake during the daytime. Some watched TV, others did nothing. But this silence was suddenly broken when the nurse brought in Ibo and Paro. The residents became very excited, alive, and smiling, touching and talking to robots. Gradually, however, the, excite the excitement wear off, and a few began dozing off again. However, when the nurse came to sit next to them, they became happy to talk with the nurse while holding Paro, as you can see in the second photo. Not only elderly people, but the nurse too seemed happy. The care manager, Yukari Sekiguchi, told me the greatest effect of robots is that they bring smiles to our nurse. So the significant is this. Social, no, social robots are not just about healing people. They act as media to connect and reinforce social intimacy between people at the affective level. The more engaged with robots, the more they feel social intimacy with them. Social robots might help to take care of people who live alone by counteracting their loneliness. Mr. Masanori Fujita, who created Ivo at Sony, revealed that people were upset when Ivo was discontinued so that some even held Ivo funeral. Now Sony creates a new Ivo, which can connect to the internet. New Ivo could be developed dramatically by deep learning with big data of people's engagement with Ivo in everyday life. Ivo can collect much more real data than Google Home and Amazon Echo as he can move everywhere inside of people's home autom autonomously. Of course, uh, these raise further questions, both of opportunities and risks, including those of ethics. The section three of the Youth and AI survey consists of cross-cultural research on young people and robots in Japan, Italy, and Australia. We ask to what extent respondents agree or disagree with the use of robots in the 11 sectors. In terms of question, Japanese young people agree with robot use in most sectors. However, they prefer human service in areas such as healthcare, care of children, elder and the disabled, and education. From a result of my research, I can see empowerment of young people through their engagement with AI and robots. About 90% believe decisions made by AI and robots should be discussed by human beings. 
About 70% want to use AI effectively and consider the use and regulation of AI robots with others around the world. About 50% want to create a world where they coexist with robots. Moreover, I can see their high expectations. About 70% of young people are excited about the future of Japan in 2030. So finally, I'd like to give my suggestion for the future of AI in Japan, as I called human-first innovation. In the human-first innovation, <laughs> I'd like to make the following three points. The first point is shifting from AI Japan first to human first. The second one is cross-disciplinary innovation. And the third one is smart wisdom. I'll briefly talk about each point. So through organizing the International Symposium AI for Social Good with Harvard University, I have learned AI is a tool for the aim that human beings want to achieve. So therefore, it is not AI robots, but we who decide our goal to create a better society in future. Then the question is, what can robots do to make our society sustainable for human beings? So we must shift from AI first to human first. And when I participated in Professor Paolo Dario's workshop, Robotics and Autonomous Systems in the STS Forum in Kyoto last year, we discussed the differences between Japanese and Western uh, perceptions of robots. For example, Japanese people might be able to accept robots more easily than Western people. Therefore, the Japanese government and industries have to be aware of this and develop AI robots beyond Japanese cultural specificities. So Japanese industries must shift from Japan first to human first. And due to the lack of current AI empirical research from a social and cultural approach, moral panic raises as AI and other new technologies become more prevalent. James Bramer, who is the longest serving dean of Stanford <laughs> University School of Engineering, gave his keynote speech about the importance of interdisciplinary approach between the natural and social science to understand the social impact of AI at the IEEE Challenge Summit in San Francisco, May 2017. So we must answer Perma's call to fill the gap between natural and social science in AI research and create robots for social good together. Yuval Noah Harari said, uh, people will have to reinvent themselves again and again in the AI age. In order to maximize new opportunities and minimize risks, we must consider, discuss, and learn smart wisdom in the age of AI. So smart wisdom is the wisdom that emerges as people reflexively create and recreate themselves as they make sense of life and their place in an AI society while appropriating the power and the possibilities offered by new technological innovation. And we are at the edge of chaos. Our proverbial butterflies are the robots which already exist in our digital society. They are not of the future but now. But if we develop a society with human-first innovation and reflexively create and recreate ourselves with smart wisdom, Japan could uh, self-organize, just as my complex model of communication describes. In 2040, we might have autonomous robots which reflexively create themselves through interaction with human and other robots. Who knows, they might even express emotions like happiness, sadness, anger, and pleasure. I hope the robots we create in the future can actually make people happier. If this is going to happen, I believe we need more discussions about living with robots in the future. So uh, let's create a better robot society together with smart wisdom. Thank you.